Around 150 years ago, the British naturalist Charles Darwin proposed a theoretical idea he had arrived at based on certain observations he had made on his travels. The theory of evolution. Essentially, this theory consisted of various scenarios, assumptions, and guesswork that Darwin had conjured up in his own imagination. According to his evolutionary scenario, he supposed that inanimate substances had combined as the result of chance and given rise to the first living cell. And according to the myth of evolution, which was supported by no scientific findings whatsoever, this single-celled organism slowly transformed itself over generations into other forms of life, again, as the result of various alleged and coincidental changes. In other words, it supposedly evolved. According to the erroneous concept of evolution, all forms of life on Earth, from viruses to human beings, came to be as a result of this fictitious process. These claims of Darwin's were, of course, based on no scientific evidence or findings. However, since the scientific knowledge and technological means of the time were at a very primitive level, the extent to which Darwin's claims were nonsensical and unrealistic was not yet fully clear. It was in such a climate as this that Darwin's scenarios received immediate general acceptance from certain circles. Materialist circles in particular attached themselves blindly to the theory of evolution since it rejected the fact of creation. They even declared that it offered a scientific basis for their own atheistic and materialistic worldview. From Darwin's day to this, they have provided all forms of support in order to keep the theory alive. They have conducted study after study and experiment after experiment in the hopes of finding some evidence that might support evolution. Yet every study they have conducted and every evidence they have obtained so far has turned out to be refuting evolution rather than confirming it. Modern science and technology, which have made increasingly rapid advances since the beginning of the 20th century, have revealed that there is no scientific basis at all to the theory of evolution. All branches of science concerned with the subject, microbiology, biomathematics, cell biology, biochemistry, genetics, anatomy, physiology, anthropology, and paleontology have produced countless proofs demolishing the theory of evolution. But the most important finding to demolish the claim of the theory of evolution has been the fossil record. Because countless fossils offer inescapable proof that living species on Earth have never undergone the slightest change and did not develop into one another. When the fossil record is examined, living things today are seen to be exactly the same as they were hundreds of millions of years ago. In other words, they never underwent evolution. Living creatures, even in the very earliest periods, had exactly the same perfect and superior characteristics as their counterparts do today. Moreover, they emerged suddenly onto the world stage with all their complex structures fully present.
This demonstrates the following irrefutable truth. Living things did not come into being through the imaginary processes of the theory of evolution, but were created in a single moment. The fact of creation has once again been revealed in the traces of flawless living things left over from long ago. In this film, you will obtain a closer acquaintance with various fossils dating back millions of years and can witness how they silently cry out to blind eyes and deaf ears. We are here. We did not come into existence by chance but were created. And we were exactly the same hundreds of millions of years ago. Fossils are the remains or traces of living things that existed eons ago in the past. In the same way that some recent fossils are only thousands of years old, there are others that belong to life forms that existed millions, even hundreds of millions of years ago. Fossils which have survived in the Earth's strata for hundreds of millions of years right down to the present day are an indispensable source of information regarding the organisms that have lived on Earth since life first began. They provide concrete evidence as to what species existed in which periods. Fossils came in various shapes and sizes, from entire skeletal remains right down to microscopic traces on stones. In order for a fossil to form, the body of a recently dead plant or animal has to be insulated from contact with the air and the external environment by being immediately covered in soil, mud or sand. Over the months that follow, new layers of soil are laid down over the spot where the dead organism lies buried. These layers act as a special shield that protects the organic matter from external effects of air and bacteria and physical wear and tear. Ever more layers of mud and sediment are laid down, one atop the other, and within a few hundred years, the remains of the once living thing is now several meters beneath the Earth's surface or the seabed. Structures such as an animal's bones, shells, scales, and cartilage gradually begin to undergo chemical degradation. Subterranean waters begin seeping into the decaying tissues, and the minerals contained in these waters gradually replace the chemicals in the tissues. These materials that replace the chemicals in the tissues are the building blocks of rocks such as calcite, pyrite, silica, and iron, and are far more resistant to wear and erosion. 
Plus, over the course of millions of years, these minerals produce an exact stone copy of the original structure by replacing the tissues within it. The fossil remains exactly the same shape and size as the original organism, but it is composed of rock. In scientific terminology, the process of fossilization is known as permineralization. There are also a few other processes that can result in fossilization. One of these is carbonization. All the original elements apart from carbon disappear from the tissues that undergo the carbonization process. All that remains of the original structure is then a copy consisting entirely of carbon. By now, we have millions of fossil specimens collected from all over the world and catalogued in the museums and collector's cabinets of various countries. All these fossil specimens reveal one very significant fact. All living things on the earth have maintained the same shape, structure, and characteristics since the moment they were first created. Many life forms that existed in even the very earliest geological periods have come down to the present day without undergoing even the slightest change. There is no difference between these living things that existed hundreds of millions of years ago and specimens living today. For example, present-day grasshoppers are in all respects the same grasshoppers that lived 120 million years ago. Today's lizards are exactly the same as the lizards of 242 million years ago. In short, living things are exactly the same today as they were millions of years ago in the past.
So far in this film, we have obtained local information about fossils. We have seen what fossils are and how they are formed. The fossil record heads the list of the major pieces of evidence that demolish the theory of evolution. As you will probably know, the theory of evolution claims that living things acquired their present, perfect and complex structure during a process lasting millions of years, leading always from the primitive structures to the more advanced. The truth is very different, however, because when you examine the fossil record with an unbiased eye, you can see very clearly and distinctly that the life forms that existed millions of years ago were not primitive in the least. The fossils you are now seeing, for example, were found in the Green River Formation in the state of Wyoming in the USA. It dates back 50 million years. Let's now examine this fossil in a little more detail. This large fish is a herring. We can examine it from close up and it is clearly identical to herrings living in the present day. The fish's mouth, for instance, the eye socket on the upper section, the gills that enable it to breathe, and the fins beneath its gills can all be seen very clearly. Let us take an even closer look at our fossil. You can see very clearly the fish's skeletal structure, and even some of the tiny bones of the structure are all crystal clear. Next to it is another fossil. This one belongs to another herring species. And like the other herring, it possesses exactly the same structure as its descendants living today. Now you are looking at another fossil discovered in Asia. This one is a crocodile that dates back to the Cretaceous period. Paleontologists have established that this fossil is fully 100 million years old. In other words, this crocodile lived 100 million years ago with exactly the same features as crocodiles living today. I'm holding yet another fossil, a 75 million year old one that lived during the Cretaceous period. As you can clearly see, this fossil belongs to a baby shark and displays exactly the same features as baby sharks living today. When we look a little more closely at its general appearance, its head structure, fins and tail structure, and even its skeletal structure can all be seen very clearly. This fossil once again shows us a very important fact, that all living things had exactly the same perfect forms millions of years ago as they do today. I now have another fossil in my hand, but first, I would like to give you some technical information about it. This fossil belongs to a species of lizard which was discovered by paleontologists in the Huixia Formation in the Ganglin region of China. 
Research has determined that this species of lizard lived 210 million years ago. Over 200 million years ago, this species of lizard was alive with its flawless internal system and anatomical structure. Let us now have a closer look at this animal. As the fossil clearly shows, it has been perfectly preserved right down to the finest details. Its head structure, for example, and the graceful neck bones that attach the head to the body. There are so many details you can see. Right down to its toes and to the joints on those digits that join them one to the other and permit them to move. Right down to the perfection of its tail. This is an exceedingly clear and excellent fossil, whose details have been exceptionally well preserved right down to the present day. It tells the adherents of the theory of evolution. No, evolution never took place at any time in the past. I now have in my hand another fossil that refutes the theory of evolution. This one is of a lobster, and paleontologists have established this fossil's age at around 146 million years. As you can see clearly, this fossil is completely identical to lobsters living in the present day. Its tail structure, body and legs, for example, are all clearly preserved. And its pincers, of course, have also survived in a very clear, distinct and perfectly preserved form. I would now like to introduce you to a very small but very significant light form. This fossil belongs to the trilobite. Paleontologists discovered this fossil in France. It is around 390 million years old. Trilobites are just one of the striking species that completely dash the expectations of evolutionists. As you may know, these animals came into being during the so-called Cambrian explosion that took place some 550 million years ago when a multitude of new life forms suddenly appeared in the fossil record. The most crucial point, and one that evolutionists cannot explain away, is that these creatures had no known forerunners or ancestors. This fact is now admitted by even evolutionist scientists. These trilobites and all other life forms that existed during the period when they were alive were created in a single moment by our Lord God with no common ancestors behind them. One of the main features of trilobites that baffles evolutionists is their compound eye structure. A trilobite's eye is made up of hundreds of minute compartments, each of which has a double lens system. This eye structure is identical to the eye structure of many creatures alive today, such as spiders, bees, and flies. Such a complex structure appearing suddenly in a creature that existed some 500 million years ago is more than sufficient to invalidate the chance-based theories of evolutionists. Why? Because no such complex life forms ever existed during earlier geological periods. This goes to show that trilobites came into being with no evolutionary process behind them. As you will immediately recognize, this is a fossilized tiger skull. It was, again, discovered in Asia and has been dated at around 20 million years old, 
which places it during the Miocene epoch. It has also been perfectly preserved, especially in terms of the structure of its teeth, which it used to capture prey. This skull possesses exactly the same perfect structure and characteristics as do the skulls of tigers living today. The next fossil is that of a scorpion discovered in the Santana Formation in the Araripe region of Brazil. Its age has been put at 110 million years. There is no difference between this fossil and modern-day specimens. Its pincers, body, feet, and tail are all identical to scorpions alive today. The fossil you are looking at now is that of a shrimp discovered in the sonhofen eichstadt region of Germany and has been established to be 155 million years old. Again, it is clear that there is absolutely no difference between this fossil, its structure, and all its organs, and specimens living today. When we look at this fossil up close, we see that it is identical to modern-day shrimps in every detail. Its head, antennae, body shape, shell, legs, and tail structure all have come down unchanged to its descendants in the present day. I would now like to introduce you to a fossil of a juvenile turtle from Asia, having been discovered in China. It has been established to have lived in the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous periods. The age of this turtle is 120 million years. Yet there is not the slightest difference between this fossil turtle and specimens alive today. Its head structure, legs, and shell encasing its body all clearly demonstrate that these reptiles have remained unchanged for millions of years. I am now holding the fossilized leaf of a plane tree. This was unearthed in Colorado and is around 50 million years old. This fossil, which has survived with all its details just as if it were a photograph, is just one of the important pieces of fossil evidence that show that many such plants have come down to the present day with their same perfect structures and have never undergone any structural changes. You can now see a fossil bat, a member of the flying mammal class. This fossil was discovered in the Frankfurt region of Germany. It has been established that it lived during the Eocene epoch, around 50 million years ago. When this fossil's bat's bone structure and anatomy are examined, we can clearly see how bats living millions of years ago were identical to those living today and how they have undergone no changes and no supposed process of evolution at all. I am now holding two separate fossils. One of them is a sunfish. The other is a herring of the type we saw earlier. Both lived at the same time. These fossils were, again, discovered in the Green River Formation in Wyoming and have been established as being 50 million years old. 
Another important feature of these two different fossils, of course, is that, with all their perfect structures, they demonstrate that these species were identical to specimens alive today. There is no difference between these and living sunfish and herring. Their heads, eyes, gills, fins, bone structure, and tail are all identical to those of their present-day counterparts. I'm now holding a fossil from a somewhat younger geological stratum. This particular creature, known as the pipefish, lived around 23 million years ago and was discovered in Italy. This vertebrae dates back to the Miocene epoch, yet it has exactly the same characteristics as contemporary pipefish. It is still yet another fossil that shows that a living species has come down to the present day completely unaltered. One of the environments in which fossils have been preserved is amber. Living things such as insects and even small reptiles are sometimes trapped inside the resins and ooze from tree bark. Over time, these resins gradually harden and turn into transparent amber that preserves the organism inside it, virtually unchanged. Since these small creatures trapped in amber are immediately and totally cut off from contact with the surrounding atmosphere, their bodies survive in a near-perfect state of preservation over millions of years, right down to the present day. Creatures fossilized in amber show in the most dramatic ways that there exists no difference between living things that existed millions of years ago and were preserved in amber and their present-day counterparts.
Fossils preserved in amber represent a major field of research for a great many scientists. For example, entomologists Dr. George Ponar and Roberta Ponar, both from the University of California at Berkeley, have carried out highly detailed studies of fossils preserved in amber in various parts of the world, particularly those in the Dominican Republic. For their book, The Amber Forest, they brought together hundreds of fossils aged between 45 and 15 million years. Fossilized specimens of many living things trapped in the act of carrying food back to the nest, in a state of defense, attempting to camouflage themselves, or defend their young, or releasing chemical substances in order to neutralize predators, have all been preserved and now displayed in amber. Like other fossils, these ones preserved in amber demonstrate one very significant fact. Living things have remained unchanged for millions of years. In other words, they never underwent evolution. Tens of thousands of fossils preserved in amber show that since the very earliest times, termites have always remained termites. Ants have always been ants. Frogs have always been frogs. Grasshoppers have always been grasshoppers. And moths have always been moths. And that none of them has ever changed.
As you know, the theory of evolution maintains that millions of years ago, the Earth must have been entirely populated by primitive life forms. Yet fossils tell us the exact opposite. As you have seen throughout the course of this film, living things that existed hundreds of millions of years ago are right before our eyes today. And contrary to what evolutionists claim, they are not primitive at all. Fossils document the fact that even in the very earliest times, there existed living things with exceptionally superior features and highly developed and complex structures. When the evidence preserved in the fossil record is examined in detail, we can see creatures whose body structures, organs, and skeletons are identical, right down to the smallest detail to specimens alive today. This fact, of course, completely undermines all the myths and scenarios suggested by the theory of evolution. Because what it means is that over the course of millions of years, no supposed evolutionary process from the primitive to the most advanced ever actually happened. According to the theory of evolution, over the passage of eons, all living things descended from one another by means of gradual changes. Yet if this claim of evolution were true, then flawed, imperfect, underdeveloped, intermediate forms representing such an imaginary process must once have existed. For example, Half fish and half reptilian creatures must once have existed having acquired certain reptilian characteristics while still retaining fish-like ones. Or creatures displaying both reptilian and bird-like characteristics should have appeared. Furthermore, there must have been millions even billions more of these intermediate forms than existing species. And naturally, we should have encountered plentiful fossils of these intermediate forms in rock strata all over the world. As a result, all the museums in the world should have been displaying fossils of half fish, half reptiles, half reptile, half birds, semi-finned, semi-tailed, half-winged, half-legged, eyeless, earless, one-eyed, one-eared life forms, all imperfect and deficient in some way. Darwin, who was well aware of this fact, said in his book, The Origin of Species, If my theory be true, numberless intermediate varieties linking most closely all of the species of the same group together must assuredly have existed. Consequently, evidence of their former existence could be found only amongst fossil remains. When we look at the fossil record, however, we see no intermediate forms at all. On the contrary, we encounter fully formed, flawless, complex, and perfect life forms. Those that have not gone extinct are no different from those living today. <laughs> 